Welcome back to Juice's Arthropods. I am Juice, and today we are going to discuss why roaches are absolutely amazing and severely underrated. So the first thing I want to talk about today with roaches, um, you probably are all tired of hearing me talk about them, if I'm being honest. Um, I will continue to talk about them until the sun literally dies, because these things just make amazing pets all around. If you haven't seen Slightly Venomous's post about why hissers make the best pets, Go watch that real quick. Like, go go do it. What, what are you doing? Stop. Stop watching this. Okay, so you guys are back? Awesome. So on top of all of those perfectly amazing reasons why roaches make such amazing pets, I have five more that I want to discuss today that I feel make them the most underrated pet of all times. So let's start first with longevity. When it comes to arthropods, there's varying levels of time that they will live. I mean, survivability is obviously crucial in the animal kingdom, specifically with arthropods, but a lot of these species live a very short amount of time. Most beetles only live maybe six months, and most of their life is lived as some sort of larval form. When it comes to praying mantises, like Queen of the Damned over here, you know, they on average only live about a year. Many roach species living incredibly uh, a long time. I mean, Chonk here has lived for about a year and a half. Average species. He's not the real. It's okay, buddy. Um, but <laughs> this is why they call them hissers. Uh, you know, on average, these guys will live about one to three years. Um, he's a little battered from some of the males he lived in before he got with me. But these guys can live profoundly long lives, considering that they are a roach. Um, you know, another thing I really want to discuss is the variety of roach species. There is four thousand different roaches i i have in my possession a minimum no more, less than i think six hisser species alone so you know there's just a tremendous amount of variety <laughs> he's just gonna keep doing this so i'll stop touching him um there's a tremendous amount of roach species in the world and it makes them really unique in the ability to kind of like many Pokemon, except everything's a bug type and nothing can cast Water Blast, I guess. Um, however, you know, it's one of those things that really makes them appealing for collectors. So you will find that there are just a crazy assortment of roaches that you don't even know exist. I just got some the other day that I've never even heard of chrome roaches and then suddenly I had them. So uh, really highly recommend roaches for just that. If you're that kind of person that loves to collect things, man, you can try to collect them all. Just there's maybe five species you won't want to. The third reason I love roaches is uh, they essentially require the same care, like no matter what species. Every species of roach requires a little bit of protein, a whole lot of leaf litter, a whole lot of vegetables, and other than that, add just a little bit of humidity in there, make sure they got plenty of water, and you are good to go. Now, the varying cares uh, would be, how many of them do you want? Because if you don't want a bunch of different chunks here, like I've got in this, uh, this tarantula cribs cage here is all his offspring. If you don't want that, then you will want to reduce the heat a little bit and you will want to make sure the humidity is about 50, 60%. Some of them, they can go about 70, 80%. I mean, the tropical species, you, basically you could just dump water on them, they'll survive. So, um, but as far as the uh, general care, you don't have to buy anything new for them. It's great. The same thing that you have for one roach will work for all the rest of them with you know varying temperatures and humidities. And that's about it. Now, one little side tangent I do want to discuss is I know a lot of people's fear, it's okay, buddy. A lot of people's fear when it comes to roaches is their capability of infestation. Remember those like five species I talked about? Well, those are the ones that you might not want to collect. Things like the East German cockroach and those types, um, they do have the, the ability to infest. But Chunk and his offspring, in order for me to get him to breed, I had to bring the temperature up to almost uh, tropical levels. Unless you live in, I would say, somewhere like Florida and you have no AC, then you will not have an issue. I mean, if you live there, then actually you, you will have an issue. But everywhere else on the planet, um, just keep it room temperature, you'll be totally fine. We're going to talk a little bit more about survivability and hardiness here in a minute, uh, but yeah, these things are amazing. But as far as having to worry about them suddenly infesting your house, unless you literally have a river that runs through your living room and you have a bunch of tropical plants, um, which if you do, good for you. But if not, then you're donut. you don't have to worry about infestation in any capacity. They're going to be very easy to uh, deal with. Now, speed is another thing I want to address. Uh, this is about as 
fast as Chonk gets. Uh, Madagascar hissing cockroaches. It can get a little bit faster. I know that's something that was addressed in a couple other people's videos. But for the most part, they're pretty chill. Um, but there are some species like uh, Red Runners and things like that that they will book it on you. So I would highly recommend kind of understanding your comfortability. I would start with the hisser before you do anything else just because they're so easy to deal with. Zero infest uh, infestation capabilities um, and they're relatively slow as hell. So you'll have no problem catching them. If you can't catch him, then I'm sorry. You're slow. Now a couple additional things I do want to discuss. I, I know this was a listicle at some point and it's just, I'm going to throw it out of the window and just talk. Um, is survivability of these creatures. Uh, roaches are literally the litmus test for the most survivable insect in the planet. Um, but when it comes to care, they are very survivable as well. Anecdote time. I rehoused all of my Madagascar hissing cockroaches. I panned through it like it was gold to make sure that all the babies were out of there. And I apparently missed one. And then I had a cage sitting in a garage that I was just, you know, the, the temperatures of California just rampantly beating down on it. And then I went out there the other day and guess what I find in the middle of that cage? A very adult now uh, roach. And so when it comes to survivability, keep in mind, there was no food in that thing. There was no water, there was nothing. And he looked like he was totally healthy. No issues when it came to food or water or anything. Don't worry guys, the story ends happily. I put him back in the cage. He ate a significant amount of butternut squash and some protein and he is good to go. And he's already uh, hanging out with some of the females. He's living his best life, so. Um, but as far as the survivability goes, these species, really you don't have to worry about them which is really helpful if you have um kids for instance if you want a nice starter pet people always give kids things like cats and dogs which live, live like 15 to 20 years and are a humongous responsibility give them a pet roach they're like three dollars and worst case scenario i mean they die which is really sad and we don't want that but they are very, very hardy. This is also a great pet for people who are neurodivergent or somebody that might have mental health issues. And I obviously know those are two different groups, but I want to address both. Um, for someone that has neurodivergence that maybe has ADHD or anything like that, that they're just commonly finding hobbies and kind of dumping them, you don't have to worry about coming back to a very dead roach. As long as you keep, and doing the bare minimum, keep food in their container and you give them water, they will survive, even if you're having any episodes, which kind of leads more to the mental health issues. If you're ever having a problem where you're just, you know, having a manic episode and it takes a couple days before you can get out of bed, they're going to be totally fine. You don't have to have that guilt of why can't I take care of these things, which is just going to add more to your stress. So these pets are amazing for people that can't commit necessarily to a dog or a cat or a reptile or anything like that that requires a little bit more care and wants to uh, take care of just a guy that is just chewing on my arm hair right now, I guess. I don't know what he's doing. So as far as survivability goes, amazing pets and severely, severely underrated, despite the fact that we literally use them for the, oh, when nuclear war happens, they'll still be alive. So um, wanted to just point that out there. And lastly, before I go into a mini rant here, um, I just want to talk about the, the irony that when I am doing any of these posts on Instagram or YouTube or anything like that, um, what I have found is for the sheer amount of people in the world that are terrified of spiders, they dislike roaches 10 times more. Uh, there's lots of times where if you post any roach content, you're going to be met with a lot of kill it with fires, uh, probably 10 to 15 times more than you do with spiders and things that typically people are going to sell, tell you to, to kill it with fire. So we, if you can get somebody to understand your point of view when it comes to a roach by showing them this evil bastard and how horrible he is if you can get them to kind of hold them or you can get them around them and just kind of help them understand it they're an amazing teaching tool to getting somebody into the rest of the other arthropods that there are out there that are also amazing and make great pets and are really beautiful and and people are really good about finding their tribe right they're really good about finding a group of people that they kind of relate to and it just really opens them up to a lot of opportunities to meet new people and try things they've never tried before and meet new pets and roaches are fantastic for that because if you can get somebody to like a roach chances are you're gonna get them to like every other insect on the planet because they're just super super chill so I highly highly recommend them as any kind of pet 
And just to recap, survivability, the longevity of them, the general care needs. I mean, I, I could go on about roaches and I trust me, I thought about making this video. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of clips in it, but I thought about just me holding all of the roaches at one time. And then I realized that I only have two hands and uh, I can't. So before we go, I have two little mini rants that I need to address because this has been bothering me and uh, I don't make any money off of these. I'm literally just doing this for the love of the hobby. So just so you guys know, um, I wanted to address first, women, you can, you can leave the room. I promise this is not going to apply to you. Are, you. are you out of the room? Okay, men, be better. <laughs> like, I mean this in the nicest way, but like I see all of the things that all of us post all of the time and it is awful how you treat women that are into this hobby we don't own the creatures i mean we we physically own them but we don't have control over all of the uh, arthropods in the world and it it blows my mind every time i see just horrible things being said to the women that are trying to get into this hobby We've had it for a long time. We don't need to have it longer. In fact, I prefer it if we share because you know what happens when you do share a hobby? It allows the introduction of new species that you may have never thought would be something that would make an adorable or amazing pet into the hobby. There's lots of different people that are into butterflies or centipedes or spiders or locusts or roaches we can have all of them together. There's more life in beetles alone. There's more beetles on the entire planet than all life combined. And yet I am constantly seeing men just trashing women because maybe they have a different substrate that they like for something or maybe different care requirements. So that's the first part of the rant. The second part of this rant, and women, you can come back to this, is we cannot just plant our flag in some species of arthropods and then just shit all over everybody else that likes a different arthropod. This is very common, and I'm, I'm sorry to say this, and it just is what it is. It's very common with people that keep scorpions, centipedes, and tarantulas that will suddenly just like be on the forums trashing people because they like a different bug. These are... <laughs> you're not... You're not unique. Like you, you, we're all in the same hobby. Like the fact that you've decided to love these, whether it was a, love, a passion of entomology or it was you got into it because it was just a unique creature and you know, all of us got into it for different reasons, but we can't, and what sparked this is I, I saw some of these people that are on YouTube that I talked to um, that just like would get these nasty comments that would own tarantulas or scorpions or centipedes and then would just like shit all over some of these women that were like because they had pet roaches or they would have pet mantises or they would have jumping spiders I've seen sp I've seen spider people talk about how awesome tarantulas are and then be like oh your little cute jumping spider guys they're all spiders they're freaking awesome like you should all be on the same team together so i apologize for the rant but it just really bothers me that like as much crap as all of us have to deal with for being on the fringe hobbies and having these animals that are constantly having people say oh i like to burn them with fire or oh i like to crush them and you got to hear that same crap over and over again from everybody else to then see us just like all against each other on the internet is really disheartening like if you love a millipede or a tarantula or a centipede or a fly it does not matter you should be on the same side so all in all i apologize for the mini rant but just if you take nothing away from this it's please please be better and i hope you liked everything i said about the roaches um i missed one thing and i apologize i had to put them back because they were um <laughs> they were hissing too loudly for the video um they're really cute if you can just get all up in their face they're just there's a cuteness in them that i just cannot um possibly explain with words but i want you next time you see a roach to just look at its face and just watch what it does and just understand that these are severely misunderstood animals. We're all on the same page. I hope you guys uh, will consider them as a pet. And until the next time, um, stop trashing each other on the internet. Enjoy.